Hello, and thank you for coming to my talk, The Pulse of Combat, Rethinking Diatonic Rhythm Through RPG Battle Music. This paper is based on my forthcoming publication, Changing Times, The Diatonic Rhythms of Nobu Uematsu's Final Fantasy Battle Music in The Music of Nobu Uematsu in the Final Fantasy series, edited by Richard Anatone. This presentation also includes some examples from outside of the Final Fantasy franchise in order to demonstrate that there is broader work to be done. If your musical life has been anything like mine, you're likely extremely familiar with this rhythm. In the modern soundscape, it is nearly omnipresent and can be heard in top 40 pop hits, when shredding on a plastic guitar, or when battling in a turn-based RPG. This rhythm produces a powerful rhythmic drive by dividing a 4-4 meter into three asymmetrical pulses. 3 plus 3 plus 2, I'll be dropping the pluses from now on, generating what Mark Butler calls an energetic quality of leading to the downbeat when discussing this rhythm in relation to electronic dance music. One could think of the duple beat at the end of the rhythm as a sort of rhythmic leading tone, that's my term, that generates a desire for resolution. 332 also has a longer but proportionally equal cousin. 33334 that closely resembles it for its front loading of triple beats for 75% of the meter, followed by duple beats for the final quarter. It's sort of like a prolongation of the first rhythm, the same proportion spread out over twice as many pulses. These two rhythms are among the most commonly used within the category called diatonic rhythm, originally outlined by J. Ron in his 1996 paper, Turning the Analysis Around, Africa-Derived Rhythms, and Europe-Derived Music Theory. But crucially, this particular resemblance is not the reason that they both belong in this category. Ron's criteria for diatonic rhythm are complex and stringent, allowing odd-numbered rhythmic groupings that divide a square meter, meaning a totality of pulses that is divisible by four, in a manner that is asymmetrical, maximally even, and maximally individuated. As I explain in my forthcoming chapter, while square meter, odd numbers of attacks, and asymmetry may seem to be simple criteria, maximal evenness and maximal individuation are likely not. Maximal evenness is a concept outlined by Clow and Douthat in their theorization of what exactly constitutes a diatonic scale, hence Ron's use of the name diatonic, and that means that rhythmic strikes must occur as evenly as possible without being absolutely even. This requires that there be only two types of pulses, 3 and 2, or 2 and 1, for example, though hypothetically it could work with any two that are adjacent to each other, like 4 and 5 as well as a distribution of said pulses that does not privilege any one portion of the time span. A helpful metaphor is that of a circle with evenly spaced points representing each pulse, such as a circle with eight points to represent the eighth notes of a 4-4 meter, with the black circles being the ones that have attacks on them. The note attacks are placed on the points that correspond to their eighth notes, and there must be a minimal difference between the placement of the attacks. When dividing eight pulses into three attacks, 332, 323, three, three, and 233 three, are all maximally even because each of these arrangements creates the minimal possible contrast between beats. The rhythm 134 demonstrates why there must be only two beat values, as the highly asymmetrical difference between the one, the three, and the four necessarily prevents maximal evenness. <clears throat> even when there are only two beat values, a rhythm can fail to meet the criteria of maximal evenness if the distribution is imbalanced, such as 33222. Two, two. This rhythm is not maximally even, and therefore not diatonic, because the attacks in the first half are so much further apart than in the second half. A more balanced, maximally even version would be 32322. Two, two. Maximal individuation, on the other hand, means that each note in the pattern has a unique set of relationships with every other note. Or as Butler draws out in detail, in the 21212 pattern, the third note occurs three pulses after the first note, one pulse after the second note, two pulses after the fourth note, and three pulses before the last note. No other note within the pattern has the same set of relations to its surrounding notes. This prevents diatonic rhythms from repeating patterns within themselves and is one of the ways that they produce a sense of excitement and tension. 
This criteria produces a set of rhythms that often have little phenomenological resemblance to each other. As in addition to our 332, there are also diatonic rhythms with beat patterns as diverse as 2-2-1-2-2-2-1 and 2-3-2-2-3. At the same time, there are rhythms that do not count as diatonic due to failing to meet one or more of the criteria, yet bear a significant resemblance to the 332 and as I will show, are used in nearly identical ways that emphasize what I'm calling the rhythmic leading tone, such as 3322. In this case, the total number of pulses is not divisible by 4. There is an even number of attacks, and it is not maximally even. In my survey of RPG battle music from the 80s and 90s, I found that the 332 and 33334 rhythms occurred with startling frequency as a means of generating what EDM scholar Mark Butler calls rhythmic interest, but that phenomenologically similar rhythms, such as 3322 and 33222, were also frequently used in nearly but not totally identical ways in spite of not belonging to the same category. In this paper, I propose an alternative category that I've termed propulsive rhythm, which overlaps with diatonic rhythm like a Venn diagram. I coined this term due to the powerful sense of forward motion that these rhythms can produce as they propel the music along with their rhythmic leading tones. For this category, I propose the criteria of maximal individuation, asymmetry, and dividing any number of pulses into two clear sections, first one of triple beats, then one of duple beats. These are the most salient features that I've observed in this new category across both video game music and the broader musical world. Furthermore, within the repertory of video game battle music, I identify two subcategories of propulsive rhythm, transitory and cyclical. Transitory propulsive rhythms typically consist of a move from a rhythmically square passage to one or two statements of a propulsive rhythm that produce tension and direct that tension towards a new section. Cyclical propulsive rhythms are when a passage is fundamentally structured around a repeating propulsive rhythm that guides and in some cases even takes the place of the melody. My analysis will show how a plurality of composers have used these two kinds of propulsive rhythms in order to craft thrilling accompaniment to their game's battles. Before I continue, I need to clear up an oddity that you may have already noticed. I have thus far repeatedly referred to this rhythm as 33334, even though the example I showed seems to end with two two-pulse attacks rather than one four-pulse strike. Ron and Butler do not explicitly deal with this issue of labeling, but I gather from Ron's criteria that the rhythm cannot be diatonic, and while also being labeled as the more accurate 333322, because this version involves a division by six attacks, an even number, rather than the odd-numbered five attacks of 33334. This kind of narrow restriction on the category is exactly the kind of limitation that I am problematizing. To my knowledge, the first RPG to use propulsive rhythm in its battle theme is the original Final Fantasy, and it conveniently serves as a useful starting point because it demonstrates both transitory and cyclical propulsive rhythms in its sole battle theme. In the overall Introduction A Transition B form, this track features a transitory propulsive rhythm in the transition and a cyclical one in the B section. After the chromatic harmonies paired with the plain four square rhythms of the A section, the transition begins with two eighth notes on one beat, followed by three high pitched stabs of sound that are syncopated along the 3 3 2 rhythmic pattern. There's a brief return to the 4-4 meter before the stabs repeat, and then the music moves on to the next section. Let's listen. These stabs of 3-3-2 create a high point of tension that pushes the music forward into the next section, the hallmark of a transitory propulsive rhythm, but interestingly, they do not accomplish this through the most typical means. While 3-3-2 rhythms line up with the meter in every other case that I've personally encountered, these begin on beat two. And coming right after the preceding eighth notes on the downbeat, they produce a double downbeat effect. The other abnormal feature is the way that the music returns to the standard duple pulse in between the two statements, which seems to almost kill the tension before it's revived by the repeat of the 3-3-2 rhythm. This energy leads directly into the B section, which capitalizes on the double downbeat by featuring two congruent rhythms in metric dissonance. Pulse 1's line begins on beat 2 of the measure and follows a 3-3-3-3-4 pattern, 
while pulse 2 accompanies it with a 233332. Although their metrical cycles start at different times, their threes and twos line up, creating yet more sense of a double downbeat. Let's listen. <laughs> The phenomenal accents produced by the bass's octave leaps generate a significant degree of rhythmic tension to energize what is, in all honesty, a rather plain and unexciting melody. The usage of propulsive rhythms to lend excitement to even the simplest of melodies is likely one of their major appeals to game composers. Now I'm going to show a variety of clips to demonstrate the use of both transitory and propulsive rhythms in RPG battle music. First. For examples of transitory, Final Fantasy III's final boss theme, This is the Last Battle, concludes its loop with an alternation between a 3-3-2 rhythm and straight quarter notes, but maintains rhythmic tension the entire time through a constant 3-3-2 in the percussion part. Final Fantasy IV's Battle II features metric dissonance as the overall square meter clashes with the electric bass, playing a 3-3-2 rhythm throughout the B section, leading to an explosive 3-3-3-3-2-2 that leads directly back into the beginning of the loop. That particular theme also uses metrical dissonance in order to elevate the tension, with the bass playing the rhythm 3-3-2-3-3-2 in contrast with the prevailing rhythm. It's also worth noting that Nobu Uematsu, who makes up the bulk of instances of diatonic and propulsive rhythm that I have found, stopped using the 3-3-2 rhythm for transitions after this point, and exclusively used the 3-3-3-3-2-2. I speculate that this may be because the longer period of time, 16 pulses instead of 8, allows more room to create such metrical dissonance, a technique he repeats in Final Fantasy VI's Battle I. Now, for examples of cyclical propulsive rhythm, there are many. This is probably the one on all of your minds right now. But examples abound, such as the 333322 of Secret of Mana's boss theme by Hiroki Kuta. <laughs> One crucial factor to note is that, with the exception of Breath of Fire's 332, each of these tracks structures their melodies and phrasing around single statements of their cyclical diatonic propulsive rhythm. In my survey, this has by and large been the norm when using these rhythms. Now that I have shown some of the ways that diatonic propulsive rhythms function in RPG battle music, I want to demonstrate the near identical usage of two particular rhythms that do not count as diatonic 3322 and 33222. I've already shown the 3322 rhythm being used in Uematsu's Don't Be Afraid from Final Fantasy VIII, and this will continue to serve as my primary example. Except for a brief, metrically varied section in the middle, this rhythm exists at the foreground of the entire piece and demonstrates the centrality of propulsive rhythms to generating tension in many RPG battle themes. Throughout the track, the shift to duple beats at the end of each measure generates tension to move the music forward, and in fact, in the B section, this rhythmic drive is the primary source of tension. The melody slows significantly, primarily moving in whole notes with interspersed, interspersed quarters, uh, but the percussion and brass continue to relentlessly hammer away at the 3322 pulse that gradually gets emphasized by ever more instruments as we reach the end of the loop. This 
rhythm, while not belonging to the same diatonic category as Final Fantasy VII's Those Who Fight, is inarguably a musically central feature of the piece, and just like in that track, as well as in Secret of Mana's track, the melodic phrases are constructed around one-bar segments of this rhythm. For all intents and purposes, this is an alternative version of the same technique, and supports my argument for the category of propulsive rhythm. My final examples will all concern the 3-3-2-2-2 rhythm, most likely familiar from Leonard Bernstein's America from West Side Story. I like to be in America, okay by me in America. As I stated earlier, this rhythm is not diatonic because it's not maximally even, but it is propulsive. However, although it still falls within my propulsive category, it has particular structural features that then lend themselves well to particular means of musical elaboration, and has also been used by Uematsu multiple times in highly specific circumstances. As I explain in my forthcoming chapter, both Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy IX have tracks that not only serve as battle music, but also demarcate extended special gameplay sequences, The Landing in Final Fantasy VIII and Hunter's Chance in Final Fantasy IX. The Landing plays during the Siege of Dalit sequence, in which the protagonists experience their first taste of war, as part of their exam to become Seed mercenaries, while Hunter's Chance accompanies Zidane's participation in the Festival of the Hunt. Both of these unique game state cues involve traversing a large but self-contained area and fighting repeated battles during a period of heightened tension in the narrative, a full military invasion in Final Fantasy VIII, and a thrilling competition in Final Fantasy IX. Interestingly, the musical scoring for both of these ludic high points shares much in common while differing from the usual accompaniment for the series. Instead of each area having an ambient track that transitions into the standard battle theme when the player encounters enemies, these segments each have a discrete backing track that plays at all times, including a seamless continuation into the battles. The traditional victory theme is also notably absent from the battles, likely in order to maintain the continuity of the two themes. Musically, Uematsu develops both of these themes primarily by repeating the main melody, which perfectly outlines the 3-3-2-2-2 rhythm in various orchestrations, a technique he also uses when writing the same rhythm for Genova Complete in Final Fantasy VII. Let's listen to a bit of each. And now Hunter's Chance. While the duple beats at the end of each metrical cycle certainly resemble other propulsive rhythms, there's a crucial difference here. In rhythms like 3-3-2 or 3-3-3-3-2-2, there is that energetic quality of leading to the downbeat that Butler describes, but in the case of this rhythm, that motion seems less focused on the downbeat specifically. This comes down to what I'm calling the asymmetrical symmetry of the 3-3-2-2-2 rhythm. The two diatonic propulsive rhythms each have a triple section followed by a duple beat, but in both of them the triple passage accounts for 75% of the total cycle and the duple leading tone portion only 25%. In the rhythm 33222, we have two sections that are equal in length but unequal in the size of their division. Two symmetrical halves divided asymmetrically. The primary result of this difference is that the duple portion no longer constitutes solely the upbeat, but instead contains a period of relatively rapid forward motion when compared with the triple half. This perfectly even alternating speed of beats is excellently suited to producing a cyclic pattern of constant tension that lengthens the upbeat and in the ensuing rhythmic leading tone to match the stable part of the meter. It's an endless alternation between explosive triple beats and fast-moving duples. In the case of the landing in Hunter's Chance, this rhythmic structure enables Uematsu to produce a recurrent cycle of tension without true release that can be easily varied over a lengthy period of time through simple transposition or changes in instrumentation. 
The lengths of the tracks also serve to underscore this point. Most Final Fantasy battle themes have a roughly one minute loop, whereas the landing goes for four minutes and 36 seconds, and Hunter's Chance lasts three minutes and 48 seconds before repeating. This structure perfectly matches the ludic situation that he scored in both games, a lengthy period of uninterrupted tension. I hope that my analysis has shown the connections between these propulsive rhythms and the more traditional diatonic ones, as well as the need for a new category in order to classify them. However, I do not wish to say that all propulsive rhythms are interchangeable, and in fact, hope that by placing them alongside each other, theorists can examine the unique affordances and tendencies of each one. Just as different varieties of dominant harmony can serve differing musical purposes, so too can different propulsive rhythms encourage particular musical structures or accompany the various ludic scenarios that composers score. These rhythms are a powerful tool for game computers, composers to infuse their music with. A musical limit break. Thank you.